What's up guys, Spraggy back here with Poker VIP. We are playing today on Bet365, which as you may have noticed, uh, if you're familiar with the software, is on the iPoker network. However, today we're playing on the uh, Bet365 premium tables, which are available in the Bet365 lobby, as you can see here. Um, and they're separate from the iPoker player pool. So when you're playing on the Bet365 tables, you're actually playing on a ring fenced, um, in a ring in a ring fenced set of games that are only available on Bet365. So it's kind of like a poker room within a poker room, if you will. Um, so we've seen what all these games are about today. I've heard it described as iPoker's, or rather Bet365's best kept secret. So uh, we're gonna we've jumped into two of the games here, two ten cent, twenty cent uh, euro tables. Uh, sorry, pound tables. One of them is a, right hand side is a ten. Pence, 20 pence table, and the left-hand side is a 10 cent, euro cent table. So we're playing pounds on the right, euros on the left. Um, and we're just seeing what the games are like, really seeing um, if they're any better than your standard iPoker games. Um, I would imagine that Bet365, being one of the biggest sports books um, out there, is going to attract more or recreational players a high percentage of recreational players so we're gonna we're gonna see if that's the case um this guy just joined the table with 17 euros posted his big blind so potentially a recreational player over there um kenya can is on both tables over here he's got nine pounds 20 and hasn't reloaded so potential recreational spot there was we'll, like i say um i've just sat down we'll see how it develops uh, we got this dj bobby bb to my direct left on both tables so we'll keep an eye on him Potentially a regular, but um, just jumping in the games, talking some strategies, seeing what the game is like, and checking out Bet365 premium tables. Opening the king-queen king, queen on the right-hand side, obviously, and ace-queen on the left, both from the cutoff, both for a 3x open seems pretty reasonable to me. We do get called by Atilopa, um, and I think we will have a c-bet. We do flop top pair. Obviously, without a club, we've got to be a little bit um, wary of... Getting raised here kind of sucks for us to the point where I would consider just folding in a 10 cent, 20 cent game. I don't see many people bluffing uh, in general. I think betting is definitely going to be our best option though. Um, here on the flop, his big blind defense range is going to be fairly wide. I think we can get away with a bet, even though our equity is particularly poor. Um, this would be one of the hands that we just shut down with on the turn, especially this turn, which is going to improve some of his weaker hands. Things like 7-8 can can probably peel again, 9-7 um, and the like. We can beat 5-4 of hearts, but we can't beat your ace. So I think he played his hand probably fine. Um, seems pretty reasonable to me. We get a limp on the button from Okie Doki. Again, this is something that I would expect a recreational player to do rather than come in for raise, would come in for the limp. Um, we are going to mark people recreational, just um, like people who are suspected to be recreational players. And ideal, like I say, brought in for an odd stack size and posted the first hand and whatnot. So I think that's a reasonable assumption to make. And Okie Doki with a limp on the button, again, I think is a reasonable assumption to make. They may It may turn out not to be the case and we'll take the tag off, but it's nice to start tagging people so that we uh, get a general idea of, of what we're dealing with. I think DJ Bobby playing both tables is a suspected regular, so we'll give him the red tag for now. We get an open from Atilopa, most likely... Uh, or definitely just folding the queen three here in the big blind. Uh, right hand side, Kenya can opens to 4x, which is a little bit much, but he is isolating this limp. So I think, sorry, this is completely standard. I didn't realize this guy's limp. It's odd that he's not reloading, though, if he is a regular player. I don't know why he wouldn't um, top back up to 20 quid. Atiloper joins into the table on the right-hand side as well. So again, I think this guy's probably a reg playing the two tables here. DJ Bobby's left us, uh, on the left-hand side. Once Ideal limps again, I'm pretty sure he's going to be a fun player. We come along with a 10-7 for the extra 10 cents. Unfortunately, the cat comes in with a raise. We're just going to fold.
This is my first, uh, like I say, it's my first time out in the premium tables. Um, as I said, John from Poker VIP told me that these games were the best kept secret. And I have to admit, I didn't even know they existed myself. And I've been playing poker for quite some time. So I didn't realize there were Bet365 um, exclusive tables here. Just give you a quick rundown of the lobby to see what is available. Um, obviously, a very decent amount of games at 2 cent, 4 cent, decent 5, 10, 10, 20. A um, couple of 2550s. 51, 1, 2, and even a 2 4 game running at the moment. Um, looks like there's a recreational player in this 1 2 game at least. Um, seems to be some broken stacks floating around here in the 100 euro lobby as well. Um, Le Titanic, 9850, Dead Unicorn, 6432. I don't know. That's the thing with a sports book, is you probably get a lot of people who are. You know, win a sports bet or got some money left in their account and just try and spin it up on the poker. I think, you know, they just jump into a poker game without being too serious of a player. So it's nice to have, like I said, a ring fenced area on a uh, sports book as big as Bet365 where you can potentially play with these people. Uh, left hand side, we flop two overs, backdoor flush draw, king or a queen likely gives us the best hand. Um, I think this is going to be fine for a C bet. Again, we don't need to go particularly big. Just about half pot should do it. Right hand side, we get three bet. Our under the gun open gets three bet. We're just going to fold. A little bit too wide to defend uh, with the king ten of diamonds versus the um, under the gun open. His three bet versus our under the gun open, rather. Left hand side, um, I don't feel particularly comfortable barreling this turn. It's a bit of a brick in that uh, a lot of his stuff that calls flop is going to continue. We do still beat Queen Jack, but we have a blocker there. 7-8 uh, improves by the river. I don't think we get a 9 to fold. It's just going to be a check fold. I mean, uh, hopefully our man does just rock up with the, uh, like the Jack-8 or something. Or the Queen Jack. And we can win. And we do, which is nice. It's, uh, we can check on what he had, right? Previous hand history. Where am I going for this? Here we go. Uh, right hand side, I suppose we can make a steal against Cranny Poker. New to the table. We shall welcome him with a raise. Does it, does it not tell us what our opponent has here? Ideal limps again. We're just going to check with the Jack 3. Not a particularly exciting flop. Um, hmm, that's unfortunate. Ah, it, his hand is right here. I'm just blind. Queen Jack offsuit. And we do win. Right hand side, we see an open from Kenya Khan. Uh, we're not going to defend the ace nine. Left hand side in a limp pot with the jack three. Of course, we're just getting out of the way. Always keen for when, uh, when new players join the table. Um, like Cranny Poker just joined here to our left. And we have Bradley James 84 joined to our left here. When they buy in for the full amount, it's always um, interesting to see whether they auto top up or not. I think in general as a read, anyone who auto top ups is going to be around the site for a little while, is going to be playing regularly, wants to use that auto top up feature. It's probably going to be a reg. Um, and then as soon as you see that stack go to like 18 euros or something and, and they don't auto top up, that's when I get a little bit happier about them being in the game. I think maybe or more likely to be a, a recreational player. So that's always a good, promising, early sign. Not a good sign, obviously, the British flag. I mean, if he's from England, or if he's British at all. all everyone knows that all the best poker players are British, right? <clears throat> he does come in here for a min open on the button, which is obviously a pretty reasonable thing to do. Pretty standard stuff. We're not going to open the 9-4. Kenya can again go in for this 4x raise. I mean, I think it was fine when he was isolating a limper. I think as a standard opening size from the cutoff, it's a little bit much. And Bradley James just calls out of the small blind, which again, is not something we want to be doing too much of in general. So potentially a promising sign for the uh, quality of the games. We'll see what goes down here. As we're joined by She-Hulk. Bradley James with a fold. Kenny can with a win. A raise on this turn by Okie Dokie. Um, I believe the flop appears to have been checked through. 
Maybe there was a bet actually looking at the size of the pot. I mean, again, I think at these limits in what's probably going to be a pretty soft game, any raise on the turn from a recreational player should be treated with um, a lot of respect. We just want to be mainly folding against those those plays unless we ourselves are very nutted. I, I wouldn't really expect them to be um, too bluff heavy in those spots, so we should just overfold um, and not worry about getting exploited. We exploit our opponents there by folding. That's how we're going to counter that play, if you will. I deal with the pot size bet at the river. Be surprised if he rocked up with less than a straight, but uh, we will not get to see his hand. And Jack threw off. Clearly, just a fold. What's going on here? I might, I might see if we can jump into a 25-50 game if a slot opens up. 50 cent a euro is a little bit rich for what we've got in the account at the moment. As I said, this is my first first foray into these streets, just seeing what they're like here. Um, unfortunately, nothing running at the moment. No empty seats. If something opens up in 25.50, we might try and jump in here, since we're only, only here for the one-off video, just trying to feel these games out. We might bump the action up a little bit. Kenya can drag in a pot on the right-hand side at the pound table, and we got Jack-10 in the big blind. We will most likely be seeing a flop, unless Kenya can comes in for his... Patented 4x open from the button. We shall see. I think if Geo opens, it's going to be a defend for us. Too strong of a hand just to fold in our big blind. So we'll see a flop. Ace, ace, two. Not much good, unfortunately. He immediately checks back. It was like a super quick check back. Which is really interesting. I think we're going to bluff. Now, if we bluff turn, we probably have to bluff river. Um, very surprised that he just gave up. When he checks back, I'm going to put him on some hands like king highs. A lot of his pairs will probably want to bet the flop for protection, but he's going to have some king highs, queen highs, which I wouldn't imagine fold on that turn. The fact that he checked so quickly on the flop and folded the turn leads me to believe he didn't see bet with something like 7-8 of hearts. You know, like some 7-8 suited, 6-7 suited, something like that, 9-10 suited, which I think is probably a mistake. Um... Ace-Ace-2 is ace a board when I defend really wide in the big blind. It's kind of hard for me to connect with that board a lot of the time. So I think if he does have air, he should probably be firing it on that board. Um, so I'm surprised that he just he checks back and immediately folds turn. Um, my intention was to get him off those king highs, maybe some of the weaker pairs in his range, by betting two streets. But if he's just folding the turn, then obviously our bluff is uh, even more profitable. So that works out well for us. Cranny Poker doesn't reload, which is a good early sign, as I've spoken about. 5-7 offsuit, not a hand we really want to raise even from the button. Uh, and here with the 2-3 suited, we'll just get out of the way. And I will have a sip on my tea. If you don't mind. Jack-7 suited, most likely a raise. A little bit loose from the cutoff, but okie dokie. Seems to be a recreational player, and Geo has already potentially shown that he's a little bit more passive post-fop. Potentially we can take advantage of that. Um, so I'm okay with the raises. It's probably the worst hand I do open. And, of course, Cranny Poker immediately punishes me. We will let this one go. Getting a decent price, but um, a really rubbishy hand to want to defend out of position. Jack Five of Clubs, certainly a potential candidate. We'd be bluffing really, really wide here if we're, if we're three-betting this, but um, I think that could potentially be fine. So uh, we'll chuck it in. We'll see how Kenya can reacts. We get cold call by Bradley James, which is somewhat surprising. This player's already called out the small blind. Now he's cold calling a three bet out of the small blind. Potentially a little bit fishy. We'll see. Um, pretty dry board. King 8-2. No gut shots. No straight draws. The one flush draw. We are going to see bet really small here. And uh, if he's if he's called really wide out of the small blind, we're going to see a reasonable amount of folds. Uh, we do have the backdoor flush for ourselves. Once we get called and this is a turn, we'll just shut down. And now we hope he has ace two or some other silly hand. I don't think that's going to be the case. He's going to bet we fold more often than not. And I believe I just... I have enough merit points and have 86 pence added to your real money balance. I mean, that's good because we just bluffed off a couple euros. Going for the open with a 2-2. Two -two. 
and we get called again by Bradley. We're now in the twos business, set mining this pot, hopefully. If we see a three bet, our twos will be too weak to call. Just has so little playability post flop and we won't really have uh, the correct odds to try and set mine if they go for any reasonable sizing. Wouldn't mind a call from She-Hulk and uh, flop Mia too, but we don't. And on this board, we're just going to go with a check fold. Our range is going to do okay opening from the cutoff here. We'd be C-betting sort of 8-9, 7-8 eight suited, Queen-9 suited, all of those hands. Um, but I think our twos just want to shut down. If Atilopa opens on the right-hand side, we're going to three-bet blind v blind with the ace-queen. If we see a four-bet, um, we will call in position. It's always good, I, I find, to start formulating ideas in your head about where you're going to go with a hand. Like, what am I going to do if my opponent does this? What am I going to do if he does this? Because otherwise, you get stuck in a spot there with ace-queen where you're not thinking, okay, what do I do if he four-bets? Can I profitably be called a four-bet? Um, and I think we can. I think he's going to have a reasonable four bet fluffing range there. We can take a flop in position. If we five bet, we're probably only getting in against better hands. So I don't mind keeping his range a little bit wider. We play in position uh, with the ace queen. Um, but what a lot of players will do is they'll three bet or they'll four bet, and then something happens like our opponent five bets all in, and they're like, ah, well, like, what do I do now? You should always be thinking, like, okay, if I'm three bet in this hand and I get four bet, can I profitably be cool? Yes. Like, if I'm three bet in. And he four bet jams. Am I calling off? I mean, in that spot, possibly. I think people can just four bet all in there for a hundred big blinds with some weaker pairs. Um, you know, sevens, eights, nines. Uh, we can take a flip with some dead money. They can even, you know, spaz out occasionally, and we we take a call. So I always like to think, okay, if my opponent does this, what's my plan of action? Um, don't necessarily get stuck in that plan of action, because obviously things like timing tails and sizings and stuff. Um, are going to impact your decision but like there with the twos like i said we're probably not going to call with the twos if we get three bet to any reasonable size but then if we see a three bet where we made it 60 cents it went 60 cents and then they made it one euro or one euro 20 obviously we're getting a better price on the call then we'll probably take a flop um set mine against a strong hand for a good price but just just a general idea of okay if, if my opponent does this what am i going to be thinking what am i going to be doing and that goes for post flop as well. Like, in terms of c betting your hands, always be thinking: okay, if we c bet here and we get raised, like, can we withstand that raise? Maybe if we're getting raised too often on that board and our hand can't stand the raise and you know has decent showdown value, maybe we want to check behind. You know, it's just, it's just you know I'm just spitballing here. It's good to good to always be thinking about a plan going forward. I think. 5-8 offsuit, what do I do here if I get dealt 5-8 offsuit? Fold because it's trash. Sometimes poker is as simple as that. Left hand side, we certainly see uh, a decent amount of action. She Hulk with the raise. I mean, this is a really strong raise for value. Three combos of fours, three combos of sixes, some combos of ace four, ace six. Potentially some players you will see here raise with like ace 10 of clubs, which are, I mean, it's a fine play. You really can't make too many mistakes when you have so much equity with the um, nut flush draw on top pair. But I think in general, I would prefer a call. I don't think our ace 10 is uh, going to be able to get it in good. We're going to fold out weaker hands like ace 8 that we have absolutely crushed. And they can potentially, if we keep those hands in, they can potentially make a mistake on turn and rivers. Um, and also, if we do hit a club, it might be... Uh, a hand or a card rather that our opponent's going to bluff if they see that there was something like king queen with one club they might barrel turn barrel off on the river um if they're aggressive you know aggressive enough to ever consider something like that so i think in general with our asex or clubs hands on the flop we should actually be calling rather than raising although raising is obviously going to be profitable just because the sheer amount of equity we have i think you're probably more profitable with a call keeping more dominated hands there are really no bad turns and rivers for you so you will see some players raise there but in general i think that raise is going to be sets to pair very few pure bluffs. And likewise here, Bradley James min raises the turn. I think I think it would be fair to say that Bradley is a recreational player at this point. Just his cold calls in the small blind to the three bet, to the open, the sizing on the turn there. I think in general this is going to be someone who's not uh, not a regular in the games. So um, Bet365 exclusive tables do seem to have a decent amount of recreational players. 
Cranny won poker as well with the 17, I'm just going to assume for now. And this isn't to say that these are necessarily definitely um, going to be fishier players, but just to get an idea of what we're doing, as I say. Queen 5 seems okay to steal. Get a fold. Jenna off in the cutoff is a tough one. Uh, we have two, what I think are regulars in the blinds, and Bradley James from the button is probably coming along and forcing us to play out of position quite often, so I'm probably just going to fold this hand. It's a little bit tight, but um, like I said, with Bradley James, just going to just gonna call soft on the button. We're going to be out of position with a yeah, mediocre hand. Jet line suit, it's certainly a raise. Can I please have my hand back? I think I'd even much rather open this. But again, a little bit wide. Ace to off from under the gun. No, thank you. And 8-9 off from mid position. Again, it's just going to be a fold. Not too much in the way of action at the moment. But we can't force the action just because we're making a video. There's no point in me just uh, playing any cards we get dealt. Um, just to try and force action for the video. I think we still discuss some interesting concepts and taking a taking a little look into these bet three six five games as well hopefully by the time our 30 minutes is up we will have been dealt something a little bit more fun we got bradley james taking down the pot on the left hand side julius agahawa picks up the king and the four in the big blind no thanks probably going to defend against kenny can open if she hulk min raises yeah sure we'll see a flop in position here, we're going to defend really wide against a small blind steal anyway. Um, so king four probably going to be a call, but we just get a walk. Here's a real hand for us. Probably a hand we're going to use as a three bet against almost anyone should they choose to open. Um, versus under the gun, it's a reasonable hand to use as a three bet bluff. Blocks a lot of our opponent's continuing range. Uh, and versus the button, I think we should be 3-betting primarily for value. Uh, you also got to add in the fact that Bradley James can cold call behind us with a really wide range, uh, which is going to work out well for us, I think, with the king-queen. The hand's going to flop a decent amount of uh, top pairs and good equities, so happy to go along with it. I think Bradley James is just really, really loose pre-flop from what we've seen. Sadly, the flop is really, really uncooperative. I mean, it's just not helping us at all. On some drier boards, we could we could bluff because Bradley's range is so wide. We can just get them to fold like a whole manner of things. On a board where we don't have any spades and there's just so many straight draws and gut shots and pairs and draws, um, it's just going to have to be a check fold again, unfortunately. But I think our pre-flop decision is, is definitely the correct one. Did he show there or am I losing my mind? No, he didn't. But he did not. Eh... I went for the auto fold on this, and I think I'm still going to just because Bradley's calling in the small blind almost always. Uh, I kind of want to open just because Bradley's range pre is really wide, and then we can see bet and just like you know print money by raising and see betting against him. But ten to is pretty low down in where we need to be. Sony Pro, Sony Pro, sorry. Uh, on both tables again, suspected regular plays both tables twenty euros. Seems like an okay assumption. Straightforward defend with the ace three. And um, clearly a, a straightforward call on the flop. Going to be opening from the small blind really wide. Going to be c betting this board really wide. Uh, seems like an easy call. May even call the turn. Uh, I don't think he's he's going to value bet too many tens on this turn card. Um, he's going to value bet all his kings. I would imagine in sixes, but going to have a whole manner of bluffs. When he checks, he can certainly have a ten. I don't think he has a king or a six, um, but I just think we have the best hand almost, you know, just, just way too much of the time to want to bluff. So we're going to check and take it to the river. I don't think he starts bluffing again. So if he bet here again, we would fold. I think that would be a 10 now looking to, to try and get a value bet or even a king that like turns a pair and then, you know, checks for whatever reason. I think we win here almost always. But uh, he does have the 10, which I think is fine. I don't think he necessarily needs to go for a value bet on the river. He can try and induce a bluff some of the time. I think most of my hands that call flop and want to bluff would bluff the turn um, rather than the river. So potentially if he's looking for a river check call, it might not be uh, not might be the best plan for him. 
We're opening a little bit too wide here with the King Nine of Hearts, probably. But, um, we're going to go with it. Flop a flush draw seems seems good for a bet. We'll go for the half pop sizing. Could go even smaller here, honestly. I think Bradley James just folding almost always on this board. Just it's so, so hard for him to connect with with his wide, ra wide range. Um, we do end up taking it down. So this is another thing. Like I hear this quite often when I'm when I'm streaming. People are almost scared to bet. Like if someone's range is really wide pre-flop, they're kind of scared to bet against it because they think, oh, he's a looser player. He's just never going to fold. But what you've got to remember is if someone's playing like 70% of hands pre-flop, when the board comes down queen 4-4 four, four, and they're sat there with jack 7, what are you going to do? More often than not, if they're really wide pre-flop, there's so many boards they're not going to hit, you can actually just see bet against them. But people have a tendency, they're like, oh, this guy's loose, I don't want to see bet against him. Whereas actually, if they're loose pre-flop and you get boards like this, those are the guys you do want to see bet against. Just because they have to fold so much. You have to punish their wide ranges. Don't let them get, with, don't let them get away with it. Obviously, within reason, you don't want to start... I'm not saying you want to start bluffing them like crazy. You definitely don't want to be lining up flop turn and rivers against them. But the flop bet is going to be insanely profitable. Once you get caught on the flop, I would shut down more often than not. Um, but against those sorts of players, just, just raising and sea betting is, is making money for sure. King King is a hand that we can hopefully make some money with. Raising on the right-hand side. That's a shame. Task completed. Pocket Kings. Well, thank you. Ace, ten of clubs. Again, um, pretty straightforward. Open here. We're going for a 30-minute video here. Just a little taster of what the Bet365 premium tables, which are exclusive to Bet365, um, like a ring, as we spoke about, a ring-fenced um, game offering just on Bet365, not on the rest of the iPoker clients. Um, and obviously we've, we've not really picked up too many hands, but the, the games do seem pretty reasonable. Um, we just jumped into any old table, and we, I think definitely two recreational players on the right-hand side, definitely a pretty big recreational player on the left. Uh, with this ace-10, we're checking back on the right. So um, we'll sit out our next big blind on both tables and draw this one to a close. Right-hand side, definitely coming in with a call with a strong 10. We may even have to call the river here. For 20 cents, we definitely are. Shows me the sevens, no good. I think once we've seen that hand, we can assume that Kenya can again is is a is a recreational player. Um, just because he's two tabling doesn't necessarily mean that he has the skills to pay the bills, if you will. So I'd say three recreational players on this table and at least two here, and a passive regular potentially in Geo. So games do seem good. Check folding the ace queen on this texture without any uh, backdoor equity or anything. King king will will uh, put in the raise, of course. We're going to bump this up to two, I think. Maybe we can go 180 here. Only a two and a half x open, I think, going nine big blinds. Out of position is fine. She Hulk calls Bradley James with the cold call again. I think Bradley James's range is super wide. I'm a little bit worried about She Hulk um, if they get involved, but we just want to bet here pretty reasonable sizing. Do you know what? I'm, I'm tempted to go pretty big. Um, just because Bradley James can connect with this board and probably won't fold on any pair and draw. And this should be our main target for value. Two snap folds, though. I think we will... Uh... No, let's see out our value. Let's do it. Let's not give up the free hands that we can play here. We'll fold the 10-7. Right-hand table, we're done. As it's uh, just set out on the next big blind. But we should always finish our orbit, really, right? Make sure we're getting the maximum amount of free hands, especially with someone like Bradley in the game. Obviously, if you like what you see here in the Bet365 uh, premium tables, you can head over to Poker VIP if you're watching this one on the YouTube channel or if you're already on Poker VIP. I believe they have some sign-up deals in the, uh, in the deals tab there for um, Bet365. And I've got what one more hand, two more hands. Ace five of spades. Should I try something? I just want to try something. I just want to see if Bradley's calling this Euro open. I think he is. So this is something as well. It's not getting stuck on autopilot, right? Like, you know, Bradley's calling a lot pre-flop. To him, he's coming from the sports book. Probably he's here to have fun. Does he care if there's a difference between a sixty cent raise and a dollar raise? Probably not. 
probably doesn't care one iota. And likewise, probably doesn't care if I just bet pretty big on this turn with two pair and shove the river. We shall see. That's a shame. But um, I think we're just getting extra value from him, just making big raises and, and seeing. Do you want, should, we, should we really push it? It kind of sucks a little bit because these guys are behind us and we're out of position. But I just, again, just as an example of maybe what we can do to these guys, let's let's go 169. I mean, Bradley wants to spin this money up. He's not really interested in playing, like, poker, right? He does fold to the 160. Now all the regs are like, what's this guy doing? He seemed to have been playing pretty straightforward for the last half hour. Now he's doing this. All right, just a little, t just a little tester to uh, wind the video down here. Just fold She Hulk. I don't. I, I wasn't looking to get involved with you. Time banking on this one. All right. This has been Spraggy for PokerVIP.com. Thanks very much for watching me. This guy just sat back in, so we have to play the Ace King. Should have opened to a Euro again, shouldn't I? Now I'm on autopilot. I've just done exactly what I didn't want to do. Only because I thought I was ending the video, though. Pretty good flop against Bradley James. Top pair, top kicker. Very dry board. Going to go for a bet. Now we have the two pair. I wonder if we check the turn here. I think his range for corner flop is still very wide. And he can potentially bluff at this ace. Like, if recreational players are ever going to bluff, they see an ace, they're like, all right, let's get him. Unfortunately, he checks. We'll just go for a pretty sizable value bet now. That's a shame. Okay, this has been Spraggy for PogerVIP.com. Thanks very much, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, that was the Bet365 premium tables exclusive to the Bet365 client. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.